Britain's coastline has protected these islands from Mother Nature and all comers since time immemorial. But behind the craggy inlets and soaring cliffs lie many thousands of vulnerable ports and villages, as well as the seaside towns and resorts where many of them spent this summer. This is the beat of the coastline coast. Look at the targets there, they're massive high-profile targets. The men and women who patrol our shores doing a rather different job. Tonight, a right royal terrorist alert. We're going to search that yacht because the owner's not here, so we're going to go walk through that. Many subs take a look at Queen Mary's bottom. That's the side of Queen Mary, the side the public doesn't often get to see. And it's all plain sailing at an air show in Suffolk until trouble breaks out on the seafront. You didn't have the fan thing. Sure of you, mate. Let go. Get that camera out of my face, you Suffolk coastline boasts some of the most spectacular scenery in the UK. It's classed as an area of outstanding natural beauty. This part of East Anglia is also the lifeblood of the British export industry. Over one and a half million containers leave the port of Felixstowe every year. 40 miles north, surrounded by countryside and almost isolated from the outside world, lies the seaside town of Lowestoft. Lowestoft is the most easterly place in Britain and was used as a navigation point by German bombers in both the First and Second World War. This association with warplanes has been marked by an annual air festival. Last year, the two-day flying event attracted more than 400,000 visitors, so the quest for a spot on the beach starts early. We're down at five o'clock to get the best position, cook a bacon sandwich in the beach hut and uh, wait for the beer to start about 11, I think. <laughs> Taking a day off work, uh, the atmosphere's great. A few drinks, a bit of food, it's been a good day. The old big hurricanes when they come over and the, the Vulcan bomber. That's a, that's a sight to see, that is. Lower stuff, 60,000 residents will be swamped by the visitors. And for the town's small force of coastline cops, this is the biggest police operation of the year. Nearly 200 extra officers have been drafted in. Be proactive today. It is a family event, so we can enjoy today. But if we see incidents starting to happen, don't stand back. Get in there, deal at the earliest opportunity, and make sure that we stop things escalating and becoming a bigger problem for us. To try and stop things escalating, the authorities have given the police special powers to deal with those who overindulge. Designated public place orders, um, this is something that we, we have in Lower Stoft. It isn't a comprehensive ban on drinking, but what it does do is give us the power to confiscate alcohol from people who've been engaged uh, in antisocial behaviour. Lower Stoft's crime rate is less than half the national average, so PC Becky Barton knows she's more likely to be dealing with drunks and emergencies than criminals. Yeah, we have had a, an aircraft go down in the sea, that was the Harrier jet one year, that was um, obviously nobody was hurt or anything, so it went down in the sea. And we've had a bomb hoax call in the past, which um, causes us great problems with, with the amount of people that are here. 150,000 people are already on the beach, and the number is growing. Putting the coastline cops on high alert. You can see across on the beach where the uh, flares are just going off, where the parachutes are now going to come down onto the beach. And that'll be the start of the air show today, really. PC Mark Cotton is another of Lowestoft's finest. A former prison officer, 
He traded in his cell keys to become a coastline cop seven years ago. Did two or three years in the prison service and then um, the opportunity to come up and join the police force, which was a difficult decision for me because I was enjoying my time in the prison. Um, but I knew if I turned down the police when I had the opportunity to, I'd probably regret it for the rest of my life. And now I look back, it's probably the best decision I made. Whiskey Delta 1 Sierra Lakes. You see direction. Cotton's not down on the beach today. He's in the back streets. After a man wanted for assault, he's been told to arrest him. When I joined the police, a lot of people that I joined with had never dealt with offenders before, had never dealt with confrontation before. Confrontation is obviously a daily thing that happens in the prison service. So to join the police, in that respect, was very easy for me. Yeah, VL, um, I think I may have got the mail in sight. Hello, can I interrupt you for two seconds? I just need a quick word with you, please. Can you just come to me? Hey. Just this guy here. What's your name, please? You got any identification on you at all? I am. Oh, no, no. Identification isn't much use when no, your you quarry went to has the his camera, mates So you stay away from the camera. The Mali has allowed the man to slip away. And PC Cotton still has his hands full. For a public order. For a public, for for a public, for a public for order. You move to the camera. Camera you, you you're arrested for sexual violence. He's gone. But it may harm your defence, Right, that's it. Listen, let go. Oi, look, I'm not arguing with you. I know you're not arguing with me. I'm not arguing with you, mate. Let go. Have you ever been arrested before? Yeah. Then will you stop pulling on you? Oi, late is bro. See you in the morning. Been late the morning, are you? Get that camera out of my face. PC Cotton is used to abuse. His years behind bars, dealing with prisoners, serve him well. So it's very much dealing with the same kind of thing other than the fact that now I'm putting them in prison, whereas before I was keeping them in prison. So it's the same kind of thing, same people that we're dealing with most of the time, although in this job I'm fortunate enough to be able to deal with victims as well as suspects and offenders. Give me two Please seconds. Uh, That's alright, they're still trying to get hold of the guy. They're still trying to get that guy who initially tried to speak to in the first time. Obviously, um, my attention got drawn away from me by this large built male who wanted to give us a little bit of grief, so he's going to be locked up for the night anyway to sober up. As the planes continue to wire the crowds in Lowestoft, 200 miles south on the Solent, they're also on the lookout for bombers. This is the busiest waterway in Europe, home to heavy industry, the largest cruise ship terminal in the country, and nearly half the UK's pleasure craft. It all adds up to billions of pounds and is a prime target for 21st century terrorists. Sergeant Andy Simpson is the head of Southampton's Specialist Police Marine Unit, a coastline cop who's been protecting these shores for a decade. His beat is the sea. And this year, he has a new toy. Name is Mariner 5, twin 200 horsepower engines on the back. It's, it's quite a mean beast. Top speed is in excess of uh, 50 knots. This is the vessel that we'll use if we're doing any boarding operations. This thing can come alongside most vessels uh, and we can safely put um, either just one officer or a whole team of officers on these, um, on these target vessels. Simpson and his team aren't going after target vessels today. They're recruiting, signing up local sailors to become unofficial civilian coastline cops. Codenamed Operation Kraken. It involves using the unit's new tool to attract fellow boat enthusiasts. What we're doing is we're promoting a, I think called Project Kraken. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. It's basically a counter-terrorist stroke serious crime initiative. Right. It's a bit like Neighbourhood Watch on the water. Okay. A small piece of the intelligence jigsaw leads to the bigger pieces, which leads to the arrest and the prevention. Yeah. Things like ESSO and that, I mean, look at the targets they are. They're yeah, massive, no, high-profile yeah. targets. Yeah, okay. It's not always terrorism. It could be people smuggling, drug yeah. smuggling. Little things like, if you were in the marina sorting your boat out after a long day, yeah. and about 10, 11 o'clock at night, a, a small yacht came in, yeah. but if there's six blokes in suits with suitcases get off, 
you're going to think, hey, that's weird. Right, yeah. Little yeah. things like that, you find yeah. out and say, this ain't right. Yeah. There are a lot of iconic cruise ships that come in here. There's a lot of crowded places. There's a lot of ferries. There's the oil refineries. There's the container tra traffic. There's an awful lot of um, damage that could be done. So we have to be vigilant. Operation Kraken isn't the only anti-terrorism mission on the go today. That's the computer we need. PC Kerry Murray is a former police surveillance officer whose love of boats earned her a transfer to Hampshire's coastline cops. I've walked the beat. I've uh, been trained in pursuit and response for driving. I've done surveillance. Okay. I've worked all over the country. Uh, and then as my career progressed, you're looking for things to rejuvenate your interest. So about six years ago, I was looking forward and thinking, what do I want to do next? And I saw that uh, the marine unit had uh, opportunities. I think it's a job that you've got to do because you're interested in the marine environment. So to couple that with policing was a bit of a bonus. What's more of a bonus for PC Murray is the great ships of the line that use Southampton. It's always been at the heart of the cruising business, the port of choice for the great names of the seas. We've got the Queen Mary in today, uh, an iconic cruise ship we would consider her. Obviously, uh, cruising's a huge industry now, but if you talk to anybody about cruising, then probably the Queen Mary, uh, following on from the Queen Elizabeth, uh, is, uh, is going to be the one that they talk about. Uh, beautiful ship. And, uh, and therefore, sadly, a bit of a target. Guys, we're going to try and go ahead of her on the wall, if we can, so just watch the roof clearance. PC Murray and her unit won't be searching the inside of the Queen Mary. They're going to look at her bottom. They'll be using the latest weapon in their surveillance and anti-terrorist armory. Well, we're going to start by finding the actual nose of the boat. The mini submarine with its own video camera. It's not an easy thing to fly. Like I say, if we had a little, little chart that said exactly where it was in relation to everything else, then it would be a lot easier. But uh, sadly not. So once you're down there, you've really got to try and do it by feel and, uh, and, and relate what you can see to where she might be. PC Murray is looking for signs that people may have tampered with the ship's hull. Right. Oh, she doesn't look so clean as she could be, does she? That's the side of the Queen Mary. Side the public doesn't often get to see. Almost 4,000 people will be on board the Queen Mary, so they can't afford to miss anything. As they press on with their mission, there's intervention on the streets of Lowestoft. PC Barton tries to enforce the new anti-drinking law. Because you'll cause problems later if you help. I'll help you take these beers off and get out so you of here. Right, you're arrested yeah. for obstruction. Oh, no way. Yes, you are. Oh, oh. The town's Royal Yacht Club prepares for a very special guest and in the Solent, making sure one of the biggest cruise ships in the world behaves itself. After her show is flying high. Hello! And low. But not everyone is interested in planes. PC Becky Barton and a proactive anti social behavior team are on the lookout for youngsters who might be trying to flout the ban that prohibits drinking in public places. A group who a known for public order incidents. Small group of um, lads who play up and cause us no end of problems. They've just been sighted coming out of Asda with a big box of beer. Think we can take their alcohol off them, can't we, Dave? PC Dave Stranks and PC Barton intend to try the new local powers, which enable them to seize alcohol in the streets. Hang on a minute, I just want to talk to you. He's 18 anyway. I know, but we've got a decent... 
designated public, I don't care if you're bored or not, a designated drinking area and you can't have it, we're going to confiscate it off you. No, no, Just no, now no, walk no, into the house. Yeah. Yeah. The new law is not popular. And these lads believe PC Barton is out of line, trying to take their unopened beer. How can you take his beers off him? Get out of here. Because you'll cause problems later if you have it. You can't take his beer. They can't do anything. You can't. I've seen You can't take them out of the I'm 18 as well. I think we should take it. You can't. The lads are making a stand. You can't. What are you doing? Don't obstruct us. It's off. I've off. No. All right, you're Look arrested you. for obstruction. What? No way. Yes, you I didn't do that. are. You've been oh, mixed for obstruction. Oh, you're cuffed. Look. Back. You never want to oh, what's, back. He done? what's he done? Do you want to come in as well? Obstruction. Go away then. You're not having the beer in the sack. Off you go. But at the police station, the custody sergeant decides no charges will be brought and the seizure of the alcohol was unfair. PC Barton's prisoner is free to go. The alcohol was seized, but unfortunately, on this occasion, um, that wasn't seen that um, we had anything to keep them on, so they were given the alcohol back and um, released from custody. But that happens. On the south coast, PC Murray's mini sub is working a treat. She hasn't found anything out of order on the Queen Mary's bottom yet. That's not for want of trying. We are familiar with, with what she should look like and, uh, and how uh, hulls are generally configured. As you can see from, from her hull, she's, um, she's got a bit of growth on it, so if something was recently added, added to it, then there would be evidence of, of algae and things like that having been moved, barnacles cleared. Well, fortunately, we've discovered that uh, there is nothing untoward with her. She's got a quite clean bottom, so the, uh, the owners will be happy about that. And uh, she all looks fine. So that's good news. The Queen Mary is just one of five cruise ships that will set sail from Southampton today. Once PC Murray has given them the once up, they belong to Sergeant Simpson. We'll make sure they get away safely. We frequently will escort the cruise ships um, from the port. Um, we're, our main role is doing it from a security point of view, just making sure everything's OK, there's nobody out there that's uh, um, going to do anything silly. Doing something silly applies to the liners too. In places, the Solens is less than a metre deep. Last year, the QE2 ran aground. Sergeant Simpson is anxious that none of his charges do the same. This is the chart of the central Solent in Southampton water. We're, we're currently sort of about here. And what you've got is from the entrance or the exit from Southampton water, straight line from Southampton to Cowles, you've got the Bramble Bank in the middle. And that's a favourite parking spot for yachts who don't realise it's there. It's not deep enough for them to go straight out that way. So they have to make a big turn here go around the Brambles Bank, which is this part here, and then when they get to here, they take, take a 140 degree turn to port and head off down the eastern Solent. The first one out is the Arcadia. She can carry 2,900 passengers and crew. She's done the hard bit, she's got out without too much traffic being around, so um, she'll just be a matter now of, of getting her out of the Solent. Um, it'll be a busy old day for her. It's going to be a busy old day for the Coastline Cubs too. Sergeant Simpson's noticed that some of the local water sports enthusiasts are buzzing the liners. There was one rib that I noticed that managed to go between the, uh, the harbour master's boat and the ship. Um, after the harbour master had gone past, he snuck in behind him. I did see the harbour master spun round, presumably to start shouting at him. Um, I didn't actually see the result of that, because the, the ship blocked my view. Uh, but apart from that, no problem at all, really. On the East Anglian coast, Lowestoft's PC Mark Cotton is back on the beat. Before he became a prison warder, PC Cotton grew up around here, and he knows most of the locals they come across. If you're in a very busy town, you very rarely see the people that you deal with, and if you do see them, they won't remember you. But when you're policing in Lowestoft, for example, it's a very small area, and you deal with the same faces again and again, so they know you both on and off duty. Yeah, T-Mike. 
Sometimes, though, his faces don't even know who they know or why. Hello, Paul. Paul, wake yourself up. Never spill your beer, do you, Paul? Paul, wake yourself up, fella. Paul. Come on, Paul, wake up, mate. It's PC cotton here. Need you to set up for me, mate. I was impressed how you were laying on the floor, but the cam was still upright. You've already been spoken to once today, haven't you? You're going to get up for me then and wander off so I know that you're safe to walk off. You're going to take your cam with you? Still got some beer in it. You alright? Go easy and watch the road, Paul, alright? I mean, lower stuff is, although there's a heck of a lot of people here live in this area, it's actually quite a small area. And um, we do get the likes of Paul, uh, who regularly comes to light because of his drunk. It's normally on a daily basis, to be fair. And the only times we don't get to see him is when he's locked up inside. Lower Stuff was once a booming coastal port with a thriving fishing industry. Its beaches were visited by the rich, the famous and the titled. But the fish stocks have dwindled, and the tourists don't come in the same numbers either. Nevertheless, the town can still attract the occasional VIP. At the Royal Norfolk and Suffolk Yacht Club, the members are celebrating their 150th anniversary and preparing to welcome a special guest. Making sure there are no unwelcome visitors is PC Malcolm Leggett. My role will be here to make sure, if they're only crowds, that we watch those crowds, crowds carefully, watching, make sure there's no problems and no stalkers amongst the crowd, and uh, make sure a safe entry into the premises. The VIP is not only important, he or she is a potential terrorist target too. So PC Leggett is backed up by a specialist team from the anti-terrorist squad. Anything at the back here is, is going to be fairly, it's going to have to be fairly substantial to get any, anywhere near our principal. We're going to search that yacht because the owner's not here, so we're going to go have a walk through that. Some of the equipment that we use, you see it's got a TV screen on it. Basically we can get in, into small areas that we can't normally access. The officers will go through the, the building um, conducting their search and, and they'll be looking principally for uh, any IEDs, any improvised explosive devices or weapons that might harm our, our principal. IEDs can be hidden anywhere, including in the smallest room. Clearly so see his uh, debris in there from the uh, plumbers, not a lot else. I think the, the time schedule's going to plan. We said 10, uh, 10 past 12, so hopefully they'll be here by then. The Yacht Club VIP isn't coming by boat. The schedule is too tight for them. The nearby football ground has been turned into a helicopter, complete with the coastline chief constable. At last, the moment has come. Anticipation is rising amongst those who have turned out to catch a glimpse. I'm presuming that's going to be her. The Yacht Club's guest of honour can be revealed for all to see. As Princess Anne mingles, PC Leggett continues to go. The lot of a coastline cop was not always a thrilling one. So far, so good, as I expected, and uh, no problems. But excitement is on the way. In Whippy, the blood is flowing. You can't do anything if you're aggressive with us. All right. And the visitors right, are getting carried away in the it? streets. What have I just seen you doing? All right, do you want to get locked up for it? while PC Cotton makes all the right moves. On the northeast coast,
coast of England nestles the small fishing town of Whitby, population 14,000. The arrival of the railway in 1845 brought in the tourists, and they've been coming back ever since. The town's most famous landmark is St Hilda's Abbey, the inspiration for the novel Dracula. Policing here during the day is routine. Some might say, dead. It's at night that the town comes alive. PC Toby Forsdyke has been a Whitby Coastline cop for five years. The crime rate is half the national average, apart from violence against the person. Whitby by day is quite a genteel town. It's you know, it's got all the nice hotels and bed and breakfast. Um, but at night, it's a slightly different proposition. The different proposition almost always starts early in Whitby. Yeah, I've just got a report of a fight on Pier Road. Um, Newquay Road and Bridge Street. It's not clear what's been going on. But the man claims to have been headbutted. He also seems in the mood for more aggro. I will, I will. Come on, sweetheart. Up you go. Come on. Can you calm you down until we find out exactly what's going on? We can't do anything if you're aggressive with us. All right. From what we can make out from him and his uh, friends, somebody's randomly headbutted him. He's not too happy about it. Stay calm. Up there, lads. There's no sign of the man's attacker. But unlike many big cities, um, assailants who run away in places quite, like Whitby are more likely know. to be brought um, to that's justice. Quite often happens. We know who it is that's assaulted him now. Uh, we've got enough witnesses that give us a positive ID. Um, and if we can, we'll get him in tonight. In fact, we know his home address. It's uh, somebody we've had dealings with before. Whitby's a small town, small community, and everybody knows each other. I think we're going to be a bit busy tonight. Being busy means having time to look for people who are in trouble or upset. What's the matter? The woman isn't making a complaint. But PC Forsdyke's sure something's wrong. What's your name, love? PC Forsdyke believes the woman's been attacked. He's noticed a clump of hair on the ground beside her. Just go and see if I can see him inside, okay? He saw a man walking away from the yeah. doorway as he approached. PC Forsdyke isn't going to let this one go. 10.43 to the BTP officer standing outside the railway station. Yeah, can you just stop that male walking past you, the white T-shirt? Just detain him, he may be uh, the sort of the female. I said, look, I'm trying to get him warmly, you know, like, it's 45. The visitors from Scotland out, staying in a local guest house. The, the man the floor, says the woman is his wife so, and that she, she accused got, him of having an affair. Be honest with me. Is there any grounds to that? I don't want to know the details. Not at all. Nothing at all. all Even right. though he's given the man a second chance, yeah. PC Forsdyke thinks there's more to this than meets the eye. Can I ask you? Got you got scuff marks on your t-shirt and on your arms? What's and dirt there? I'm Right. That's like. What about the the dirt on your hands? Probably who's sitting next to him. All right. Okay. Obviously checked with her. She's very much the worse for wear. There hasn't been an assault. He's been trying to get her home, um, and she's that far gone that he hasn't been able to do it by himself. Being a coastline cop means you can do something about that, especially when you have a police van. I'm so but, sorry. Well, no, we can. If, I'm so sorry. If I'm you're so agree, if you're agreeable, sorry. we can give you a lift up to the guest house if that's, that's all right. What I need to do? I'm so sorry for missing. It's no problem. 
Normally we'd, be, we'd allow you to sit in the front of the van because mm. we're just dropping you off, but we're going to, given the state of your wife, we're going to have to put her in the back in the cage. Put her in the so transit. Sit Andy. in the back with her just to yeah. make sure she doesn't fall over when we go around the corner. Yeah, yeah don't worry about it. It happens. So sorry. Yeah, it's, it's relationships, isn't well, it? It's relationships. <laughs> don't you just stop the road two minutes out of our way and it's, uh, hopefully make their evening a little bit more pleasant than it was going to be. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mind the slope. That's, that's all right. Hey, Darren, don't worry about it. Go on. We've got you home safe. Thank you. All right. Good night, guys. Bye bye. Two hundred and forty three miles along the coast, the plane spotters are long gone from Lowestoft. But PC Mark Carlton is still at it on beach patrol. The coastline is extremely quiet at the moment, although we've got a few tents on the, on the beach, um, but they're not causing any issues, it's not an uncommon thing. When the weather's a little bit better after the air show, we often get a few more people on the beach. We often have issues with fires and things, but I think with the weather the way it's been, that's not going to be something for us to worry about, but it's so far been a very, very quiet evening. PC Cotton may have spoken too soon. A call has come in about a domestic violence incident in a housing estate behind the seafront. OK, we're now on our way to um, Grade 1, which is a uh, male being seen to be assaulting two females at a premises. And we're the only unit, I think, heading in that direction, so we'll have to get a quick overview of what's going on when we get there. The alleged attacker is the man walking away with a mobile phone to his ear. He's now on the run, but not for long. Right, stand completely still. Yeah, I have. What did you run for in the first place then? Huh? What did you run for? See my friend down the road. Don't lie to me, you ran because that's where we're police no. officers. I right. didn't even know you're police officers. Uh, I've been drinking down Old Broad yep. and also low stuff in the early show. Yep, and an argument with someone? Uh, a little bit. And you've assaulted someone? No, no. That's well, what I've been told. You can check. With them. All right, well, I will do. Yeah, listen, in the meantime, because you've done a yeah, runner. Listen. Now you listen to me. Yeah, I can understand. Listen. What? You, you can arrest me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Arresting your suspicion of assault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, just listen very carefully to yeah, me at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. Once we speak to the lady, yeah, that's things fine. are different. I could release you. I can understand. Yeah, that's fine. To drink listen. Today, the man might be claiming right, to understand, right. but he's only buying time. Are you sure that's all? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying. Listen to me very carefully, right? Ah! Yeah, assistance, please. PC Cotton's I'm taken on someone much place. bigger than himself. But he does have the edge. Parva oh, spray. Have a start. Right. Thank you. Right. The right, spray stop. causes intense irritation right, in the eyes. Right, but it was PC Cotton's fancy footwork right. which really did the trick. <laughs> Stay still! If you're dealing with someone who's a lot bigger than yourself, and there's plenty of them around who are a lot bigger than me, the easiest way is to get them down very quickly and they're a lot easier to control on the floor than they are standing in front of you with both their hands ready to hit you if need be. So I generally like to sweep the person down to the floor as quick as possible and then I can deal with them on the floor if need be. <coughs> Gonna need a van for him, just start plan up. He's cuffed. And you're also further arrested for resist arrest. Okay? And on top of that you're further arrested for assault on police. Help! Help! Keep yourself <coughs> There are children around here. Stand them up in one, ready? One, two, three. Oh, ah! Ah, my left wrist! Look! Can you bend them? Please! There you go, alright? The Parvid man might be having trouble seeing. Yeah, thanks very much. But he can still spit Further a piece of one, please. eye. So we'll now go back to custody and we'll book him in. Um, I'm going to get it cleaned up, because I don't really appreciate people spitting them on my face. And um, we'll take it from there, but he's going to be in for tonight, that's for sure. Hopefully a bit longer. Back at the police station, while the big man gets booked in, PC Cotton is left to clean up the mess. In my service, I don't think I've actually... I think I've only been spat at once or twice. Um, they've actually made contact. A number of times people spit in your direction, but they don't always make contact. Um, yeah, it's one of them things that... Completely despise of. 
Um, but there's very little you can do about it because they're generally so quick. As you saw with him, um, they're generally so quick there's no chance of dodging it. In North Yorkshire, PC Forsdyke is making sure there's no one misbehaving in the back streets of his town. Couple having sex with public. First of all, bin your beer. Pardon? Bin your beer. Just <laughs> we'll stick it on there for the time being. All right, it's a tad embarrassing, isn't it? You're out in public. What have I just seen you doing? All right. Do you want to get locked up for it? Well, you can. I suggest you do as you're told and you be polite to me. Now, come and stand in front of me. She ought to speak to me. You have just been caught committing an act of public indecency. Now, you've got a choice. You... How much have you had to drink tonight? Quite a bit. Quite a bit, right. So I suggest that you be quiet and listen. Use your ears and not your mouth, all right? Where are you from, Marta? You're from Norway, okay. Is it normal to behave like that in Norway, out no, in the streets? No, it's not I'm normal sorry. here, and it's not legal either. Just keep it indoors. Yeah. And keep it in your pants yeah. until you get indoors. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, I'm so You're sorry. very... Yeah, yeah. Lady, yeah. You're very lucky that there's nobody no, around here no, that saw you except for us. Fun. Go on. Go. Thank you. Thank Good night. You. Just been there, mate. Go. They haven't offended anybody. I think in these circumstances, uh, the embarrassment, the suitable words for advice are uh, sufficient to uh, make the point. Coitus, coitus interrupters by police. I never did Latin at school. Coming up, a twist in the tail for PC Forsdyke. Close to the uh, Abbott's Road area. Somebody at the guest house has called in that they've got a female on the floor in the guest house. And PC Cotton runs into an old friend. Oh, second time in one day. It's 3 a.m. on the North Yorkshire uh, coast. PC Forsdyke has moved on from the sex games to a man. The suspected drunk driver did not stop when asked to do so by another coastline cop. He's basically failed to stop, which is an offence in itself, but it makes us wonder what else, you know, what reason he is running from us for. The car is no longer being chased. He's bailed out and legged it, and he's now somewhere in those houses. So we've got a police dog on its way up to uh, see if it can locate him for us. Officers who have seen the wanted man are giving descriptions. And PC Forsdyke is pretty sure he knows who he is, or who he's part of. It's the, uh, the Scottish couple that's been having the argument that we took home, that we've dropped off at their guest house. And he is very, very drunk. He's obviously gone for a drive when he knows he shouldn't. He won't know where he's going either. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to go back out onto the road because there's a cut straight through. Simon's got that covered. Damien and Steve got the other end of the field covered. Yes, you think um, that you've got them home safe and sound and they're going to bed. Um, we'll go back to back to the car in the first instance and then back down towards Prospect Hill. That's our man from earlier. It's the man he let go. We meet again. He's initially tried to say that um, he wasn't in the car and we're making it all up. Um, obviously, uh, Damien and Steve saw him in the car. They saw him earlier when we were speaking to him down the town centre, trying to get him home. Yes, but it's 67. Anything over 35, so oh, it's uh, yeah, under mm -hmm. for uh, drink job, OK? He's drunk. Um, so, the, as far as we're concerned, there's enough evidence there to show that, uh, yes, he was driving the car. This time, there'll be no second chance. So you understand why you're under arrest? Not really, no. All right, failing to stop for police, mate, and drink driving. In so 
nothing. But the coastline cops are also having trouble with drinkers who refuse to go to bed. A guest house on the seafront has reported a drunken intruder, and they want him gone. There's a drunk male who's basically asleep in um, the foyer of a block of flats. Okay, let's see what we got. It's someone PC Cotton gave a second chance to. Oh! Second time in one day. But this time, angry residents want him out. We're now getting him out. Come on, Paul. We're not just there to catch the bad people and put them behind bars. We're also there to make sure that the town or the village, wherever you're policing, runs smoothly. And um, we don't have the staff and the numbers and the facilities to, to arrest everybody who commits every crime, no matter how big or small. So we have to just weigh up our options, and sometimes it's just easier to help the people rather than just arrest them and put them inside. Paul, how long ago did I speak to you about sleeping somewhere you shouldn't be sleeping? You don't even know, do you? That was about two and a half, three hours ago. Now these people here, you don't know these people, do you? No. Well, there's elderly people in there, there's families in there, and they don't need you sleeping in their doorway. Do you agree? So where are you going now then? Why don't you go on to the beach area and sleep in the lifeguards area or something like that? Yeah? Now I'm going to walk with you just so you'll make sure you get away from here. You've got your beer here, I think we'll keep hold of that because bearing in mind it's a designated drinking place. Yes? We can take alcohol off you, can't we? Can't I pay for that? You can't have it back. It gets seized. It gets booked into custody. It gets booked into our property and it stays there. Well, second time tonight for us. Third time, I think, today. And this time we've got his beer, so hopefully he can't get any more drunk than he already is. But um, he'll find a way, I'm sure he normally does. Back in North Yorkshire, PC Forsdyke has also found someone who can't get any more drunk than they already are. This could be interesting. Sound asleep before we wake him. There's another one in the back as well, snoring. I'm a police officer. Hello. What are you doing? Sleeping. Oh, is, this, is this your car? Is it his? And he's made you sleep in the front, has he? A bit of You're a bit of are you? Has it been a good night? <laughs> Obviously for beer it has. Neither man is causing any trouble, but PC Forsdyke needs to be sure they have no plans to drive the van away. He's not taking chances this time. There is an offence of being drunk in charge of a vehicle. That's basically sitting behind the wheel and you've got immediate access to the keys. So you mind just, just turning out your pockets for me, just so I'm convinced you haven't got the keys on you. Good lad. Um, yeah. Back of <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how big are these pockets? Yeah, I was going to say, that's not a Renault key, is it? Yeah. All right, no worries. Well, sorry you've ended up with the driver's seat. You're not going to get in the back with him? No. No, he's snoring a bit, isn't he? <laughs> All right, fella. Well, look after yourself. Good night. For Britain's coastline cops, it has been a good night. Few arrests but a lot of contented residents and holidaymakers who can also sleep easy and remember the summer of 2009 with sweet dreams and a smile. <laughs>